the sound of the baby's hungry cries pierced the darkness. His father angrily flung his covers aside and climbed out of bed, hurrying to the footlocker that doubled as the infant's crib. Furiously, he slammed the lid shut inside. The cries soon turned to gas as the baby struggled for air. Hi there, I'm Patrick Riley, and what you heard right there is a passage I read from the opening of a fantastic book, one that I am highly recommending for those who are into true crime, history, pop culture, especially in the 1960s and 70s, and that is a book about the Zodiac Killer. The book is called The Most Dangerous Animal of All, Searching for My Father, the Zodiac Killer. It's by Gary L. Stewart and Susan Mustafa. It's on Harper Collins. Now, this book was given to me by Kimmy as a gift recently. Matter of fact, just a few days ago, uh, I read it that quickly. Um, hard to put down. Now, I have read the other books. If you're like me and you've read maybe some other materials on Zodiac, one of the most uh, famous is Robert Graysmith's book Zodiac from 1986. I read that when it first came out. And matter of fact, read it a couple of times. And then his Zodiac Unmasked, which was in 2002. I believe that book, Unmasked, was used some, but I know for a fact this book, Zodiac, the first book by Gray Smith, was utilized heavily for a 2007 Zodiac movie. Now, that movie, you may or may not have seen. It didn't exactly uh, break box office records in the United States. It's done by the guy who did House of Cards, also Social Network. Um, and one of the n interesting things is it has Robert Downey Jr. in it with another person who starred in the Avengers that works, they, they just work extremely well together. Beautiful movie magic together. Mark Ruffalo, who plays Dr. Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk, and plays the Hulk in the Avengers. They are together in this uh, movie. That alone is worth checking it out. Also, the, the film does capture the 1960s, I think, quite well. Utilizes contemporary music. There's a very eerie scene, one of the opening scenes, matter of fact, the opening scene, um, that captures things very well using something by Donovan. And I won't spoil that for you. So if you haven't seen that, it is worth checking out. Also, their own score, uh, their original score that is made for this film is very eerie and creepy in the right way effective very effective so worth checking out from that aspect now historically uh it doesn't answer everything if you will leaves a lot of questions and does go down the route that gray smith went now i have to say this the puzzle wasn't solved but i think this book does now as i mentioned on our podcast 155 which this video does go with i don't know I don't know if I suspected a relative was a serial killer, especially the Zodiac or any serial killer. I don't, uh, how do you weigh one over the other? One was bad enough. If I would have pursued this, I think uh, you'd be uh, scared to, for the answers, but he did. Now, the opening sequence that I just, uh, or segment I read from the book, explains everything right there. Gary was abandoned. He's the baby in the footlocker. And he was about four weeks old, I believe, maybe five. And his father left on a train from New Orleans to Baton Rouge and just dumped him off at a random location. Wasn't prearranged, didn't take him to an orphanage, didn't drop him off at the fire station, didn't do the police station thing. He explains also back then in a different era, you, you couldn't just leave a baby, you know, at the fire, firehouse. No. A little bit different time period, but... What his father did, he didn't necessarily have to do the way he did, nor why he did it. But I think the author is thankful that he did, considering what he believes his father was. Now, his father was not the Zodiac Killer right then. That was a few years later. But something he writes about in here, I think kind of explains something that appears in the movie, in Grace Smith's books and other books, about Paul Avery. Now, Paul Avery was a reporter for the San Francisco Chronicle that is part of Zodiac lore and history. Zodiac wrote letters to him, for some reason seemed to hyper-focus on him. You see, the Zodiac killer, if it is his father, had contact with Paul Avery a number of years before the first killing. His father, in the early 1960s, 
found his mother. His mother was a teenager. His father was 27 at the time. I believe she was 13 going on 14 or right at 14. They started a relationship and then they ran away together. And they became known as the Ice Cream Romance. And this thing captured America's attention as they were on the run. I won't want to spoil some of the details because there's some things that happened before the first time they ran and the last time they took off. And Paul Avery wrote articles about it and in some ways maybe kind of poked fun of him. Him. Which may explain why the Zodiac all of a sudden had attention on Paul Avery a number of years later. A lot of other things may be solved too. Time gaps, things going on that explain why killings weren't happening by the Zodiac may be explained in this. Now you're going to say, what kind of proof does he have besides just some suspicions? Well, a handwriting expert got involved in 2012 by this author and his uh, co-author. And the handwriting analysis uh, expert uh, took a look at the marriage certificate, the marriage um, between his biological mother and his father, biological, and determined that the handwriting of his father is the same writing of the Zodiac letters. And he puts evidence in there and shows the letters, and I mean the actual letters, and how they are very similar. And then there's the cryptogram cryptographs, things that the Zodiac sent, little puzzles, said, if you could solve this, you'll see my name. It's right there. And nobody ever could find. They were especially looking for names that had been associated like in this book and also in the movie Zodiac. And those names were not found. But his father's name is in not just one, but two of those. And he shows that. Also, there's a scar on a finger. There is a fingerprint of the Zodiac or the Zodiac killing, and he shows how his father's fingerprint and a scar on his father's finger is the same as on a, on a, uh, on a crime scene, left at a crime scene uh, with the Zodiac killing. It's creepy. It's haunting. It, it makes you angry uh, and sad. I, I feel for this author. I, I feel very sorry for him. Uh, this. I'm thankful that he wrote it, um, but I, 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 I can't imagine the horror that uh, he must have felt when it really, really sunk in that this is who his father is. And I think it really did. Uh, there's a scene where he goes where his father's grave is. Now, his father passed away in 1984, which in a way is a good thing because his father, he doesn't mention this in the book, but his father passed away two years before this was published. And I think his ego, he would, one, it may have resurrected the Zodiac if this book came out, it may have caused him to go, hey, I am back. Or B, he may have just been laughing his butt off and gloating how smart he was because the book is wrong. His father passed away in 1984 in Mexico. He goes to the grave, talks about how his father died. I won't reveal it here. Has a touching, I mean, it is, I, 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 I feel for him the scene of where he goes to the grave and what he says to his father. That uh, is priceless. Uh, it's, it's worth the read for that alone. I wish some smart producer, I hope some smart producer, decides that this, yeah, it make a good movie, but I think it would make a better TV series. And I'm being serious about this. Because if TV shows like Hannibal and Psycho, you know, based on Norman Bates, all this fiction thing, fiction stuff can actually be successful now. I think taking a look at this historical part, this would be, there is so much data in here, so much material that could be a successful series. You could deal with what we know and have the crimes reenacted and then go a little bit further and uh, delve with the research that Gary has done linking his father as the killer. And I'd love to see it shot on location at various areas, you know, where his father and biological mother went on the run, have that stuff, have the whole thing done, and show exactly how this bright little boy I'm, who loved puzzles, you can explain some things with the, uh, the codes 
He explains why his father was into codes, how his father loved the Mikado, which just mysteriously, the Zodiac quotes the Mikado. And you'll also find out what famous television and movie star associated with his father in high school. They went to school together. It's in this book. Worth checking out. And they could have that, by the way, in the TV show. I think uh, it would be very good. And I, I'd love to see that being done. So please check that book out. It is worth the read. Um, you can find it at all sites, I'm sure. Amazon and your friendly bookstore, whatever, wherever that may be. Um, by the way, if you like what you're hearing here, we do other uh, book reports. We do them in podcasts from time to time, and we're going to be doing more on video. This is the first of, I hope, many to come. Hope to do at least one a week, and it's not all going to be on crime genre or things like that. The next one is going to be about uh, the comic book world, a uh, biography that I read recently that I think uh, is worth checking out, especially if you're into comic books and the superhero movie genre, but even if you're not, uh, because well, the two people it's about, it changed entertainment and affected everybody's life in one way or the other from either a fun entertainment thing or uh, a livelihood from when they were teenagers on, the authors that is. And we'll take a look at that in one of our next uh, book reviews. And if you do like what you hear here, make sure you check out our podcast. We have daily podcasts that originate from Orlando, Florida, where we talk about pop culture, comic books, science fiction, horror, uh, lifestyle, healthcare issues, just a wide range of things. We try to keep things in a fun light. Uh, that's what we try to do. And you can check that out at RileyandKimmy.com. And when you go to our website, make sure you check out our social media platforms. Friend us and like us at various social media because if you do that we do the same back we guarantee it and you can really help our show grow by telling your friends about us that's the riley and kimmy show available at rileyandkimmy.com